Yes, it's me. Sorry. I feel like Shauna last night. You want to clear the house? Just tell them Shauna and Kathy will be there. <laughs> and a wind went through. Hey, it is what it is, guys. It is. Just think of it this way. Jim and Jason listen to us all the time. And you only have to put up with us some of the time. You know? So they're gone, and they told us girls, you can do it. And I'm like, okay. And then um, I'm not like Shauna. Jason had been preaching a series of sermons like Pastor Jim, and he's, we've been in the book of Psalms, right? We're supposed to be on chapter 18. Nah, I'll let him do that next week. I was like, nah, I'm not going there. I gotta stay in my zone. But you know, sometimes you you have to do what God tells you to do. And honestly, I'm not one that names messages or because I don't really feel like I preach, I just teach, I just talk, I ramble. Um, if, if I had to put a title on today, I would say I'm the little train that said I can. Gotta chug along, you know. Over the course of probably the last 18 months, there's been two words that have just constantly just been in my head. And it's persevere and perseverance. And, I mean, I cannot get it out of my head. It's like every day, okay, Kathy, persevere every day. Perseverance, you've got to have perseverance. You can do this, persevere. And in I say 18 months because about 18 months ago, everyone in this little room today, I think, knows that Jim and I did a, another life change. You know, we've, we've had quite a few life changes in our course of our life. And, um, I mean, this one was a big one. Uh, adopting children was big. Giving birth to our first child was big. Saying I do and staying together for 41 years, that's big. And in our ministry, we've done quite a few things, and um, 18 months ago, God says, okay, this is what we're going to do. I'm going to give you this piece of property, and yeah, you do have to maintain the bills, and you're going to have to take care of the uh, property and the condition it's in. You need to clean it up, and, and there is a warehouse there, and yes, building blocks is going to continue, and you're going to still be on the staff at, at Gravity, like you said you would, Jim, and you're going to press forward to, to teach and show, and, and but we're going to clean this place up, and, and yeah, I know this little house here is not very good, but we'll make sure it gets good, and it did, praise God, And but I see See things. I see things. This piece, this piece of land can can be something great for the kingdom. Well, 22 years ago, the person that originally owned that property named it his place, and I like that name. So I tell people, "Oh, I live at his place," and I said that one day, and they go, "You live it with Jim?" I'm like, mm, yeah, but that's not what I'm talking about. <laughs> I live at his place, you know, and um, and. It, I'm pretty easygoing when Jim tells us we're going to do something. I'm like, okay. Because to be honest, 24 years ago when he told me we were moving from Visalia up here, I went, okay. And I prayed and cried a lot privately and was sick. I lost like 10 or 12 pounds in like a month. And it was just nerves. It was nerves. And that was a big step for me because we left a church that he pastored for, oh, seven years and um, in that church, we had like 30 relatives. It was a very comfort zoning. You know, we had grandmas and grandpas and aunts and uncles and cousins. And I went to church with family every week. And, and you know, and plus there was people that I had known my whole life. Um, actually, when we went back there here a few months ago for Jim to fill in for that pastor, um, the head deacon is a guy that I've known my entire life. You know, we were, we were tiny kids in Sunday school together at four and five. And, and it was very, very comforting. But to come up here was like going to another world. It's like, okay. But it's like, we can do this. And we did do it. It's been 24 years, and I'm still breathing, and we're still here. And so things are good. So then this challenge 18 months ago when God said, let's do this. I just went, whoa, this is crazy. And there's been quite a few days I've just went, I don't want to do this. I want to go home. And God laughs and says, you are home. 
you know, you live in that little place behind the building. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. That's where I live, right? And so it's really been a challenge for me to keep persevering. And God has just taught me so much about these two words over the course of the last 18 months. And really, it's not two words that we hear very often. I mean, how often do you hear someone say, oh, persevere? Do you have pers perseverance? I mean, you don't, we don't hear those words very often, right? You don't even hear balk, you know, the football coach go, persevere, my team. <laughs> no, you don't hear that. You know, you just don't hear that. And so really, you, when you think about what do these two words mean? Well, persevere, if you look it up in the dictionary, dictionary means to continue in a course of action, even in the face of difficulty, or with little or no prospect of success. Oh, that sounds exciting. I mean, I am just thrilled now. And then if you want to go a little further, extend the word to perseverance means persistence in doing something despite difficulty or delay of achieving success. These two words really are not exactly like pep rally words. When you start thinking about it, it sounds like a work. It sounds really deep, really hard. But if we take it spiritually and we pick up the word, the B-I-B-L-E, and we start thinking and seeing what it says. James 1.12 says, Blessed is the man who remains steadfast. Galatians 6.9 says, Let us not grow weary. First Chronicles 16.11 says, Seek the Lord and his strength and seek his presence continually. Hebrews 10.36 you need to preserve and have perseverance so that when you have done the will of God, you will receive what he has promised. Oh, we have to persevere to get what God promised. Oh, there's got to be an easier way. Philippians 3.14, press towards the mark. Revelation 3.11. I am coming soon. Hold fast. Hold on. Now, I could keep going. I really could. I just scripture after scripture after scripture. Because a hundred times the Bible talks about these two words. Maybe not saying perseverance or persevere. But the Bible uses various words to explain and express those two words. Like diligence, endurance, persistence. Steadfastness, waiting, oh, that's a word none of us like. Oh, oh, geez. And then this is one we even hate more, patience. I got to wait, be patient. Are you kidding? But I got steadfastness. I mean, so God has used words to describe this in over a hundred scriptures. So come on, tell me what you think God is telling us. To me, he's telling me it's going to be really hard, but it is so possible. You know, we look at things so many times in our lives, and as kids, I hear kids say, it's too hard. I don't want to do it. Our three-year-old, she'll go, Mimi, no. I can't. When Carrie was Addison's age, Carrie would say, my legs are heavy. Pick me up. You know, my legs are th four times your size. Mine are heavier. Carry yourself, you know. And so we get this way. and We become very wah-wah. We really do. God, it's so hard. Don't forget, God himself left heaven. He knows it's hard. He came down and became one of us. But remember, blessed is the man who stays steadfast. What does steadfast mean? It means firm. Are we firm? Are we loyal? Are we faithful? Are we committed? Are we devoted? Are we dedicated people? 
Those are five words that I find a lot of the world has trouble with. Being loyal and faithful. Oh, I'll be there um, if it works out for me. I had someone call me today. They're not here because they had ants. Well, I declare. Really? Hey, all I, all I know is what I was told. I'm committed as long as I get my way. You know. And that's about everything. I'm a committed employee as long as you don't give me any slack. And, you know, we were talking about that before church, about getting off for special day things. And Carrie was saying, I work for a Christian school, and they told me I couldn't go to women's retreat. And I get it. I really do. It's like, are you joking me? However, she's a very committed teacher. And you can tell real committed teachers is because they get very upset and very teary-eyed and very, very defensive for their students. And I can always tell a Christian teacher, because they go one step further, their hearts become humbled and become soft because they see their children need something more than what our schools are giving them. Commitment. It's something that's just hard for us. Being devoted. Devoted means good, bad, happy, sad, people. You think I've been with my man for 41 years because it's been roses? Good gracious. I told him the other day, I said, I don't understand. This is one of my questions for God when I get to heaven. I don't understand it. Men get older and get more defined and better looking. They look good bald. They look good gray. A little wrinkle around the eye. It's like, ooh, he's good looking. Women, we just sag and become looking like elephants. It's like, what happened to us? I'm like, really? And Jim, I told him that the other day, and he goes, oh, stop it. I go, okay, okay, let's back up. How many times do you see an older woman with a really younger man? He goes, well, not very often. I go, my point. How many times do you see an older man with a younger woman? Oh, all the time. My point. <laughs> younger guys are not going to look for us old wrinkles. But young girls, they're like, ooh, he looks really handsome. It's like, really? I mean, relationships is devotion. Happy, sad, good, and bad. I get the guy that starts get looking better as he gets older, and he gets me. <laughs> Thumbs up. And, you know, dedicated people. I find that in churches, People are dedicated as long as God's blessing. I'm faithful to church. I'm giving to God financially. I'm giving to God with my time. I, I praise God. I give all the accolades to God. Oh, I'm, I'm there, I'm there, I'm there. And then something happens, and it rocks our world, and we divorce him. We separate ourselves from him. But the Bible says that we need to stand steadfast the people God loves is us he created us and we're the people he wants to bless don't grow weary okay come on I don't know about you I'm tired all the time I am more tired than I am ever rested and um I tell people, I go over to that wall, put my back to it, close my eyes, and seriously, if I didn't open my eyes, in two or three minutes, probably be sound asleep. I have no problem going to sleep. And there are some nights I almost think I died and God resurrects me the next morning. It's like he sucks the air out of me, and it's 5.30 a.m., he goes, and puts breath back in my body. I'm like, because I sleep so well. But this is what God is talking here. He's talking about being weary spiritually. Don't grow weary. Just because things don't go your way, it's going to be okay. Persevere. 
stay focused, go forth. When a guy's in battle, our military, I'm tired, Sarge. I don't want to go out today. I don't think so. <laughs> Grab your gun, let's go. You know, we got, and that's the way it is spiritually. We are in a war. And each of us is in a war individually. And if we combined ourselves together, we are now an army and we're in a war. Everything we do is a battle. If you don't think it is, I'm breaking the news, it is. Because this world is trying to suck everything out of us. They don't want us to be loyal. They don't want us to be devoted. They don't want us to be dedicated. Because if we're all those things, then they can't control us. Satan doesn't have control of us if we're those things. And we may get tired, but it's okay because he will give us rest. He will rejuvenate us. He will give us what we need. We cannot give up. Because when you give up, if a soldier gives up and just lays down, says, I give up, what does he become? A casualty. He will be taken immediately. We give up. We put our sword down. I give up, God. What happens? Satan devours. It's important to understand God, the devil is going to attack us. He is going to nibble on us all the time. I like it when he nibbles on my ear. That way I know he's here so I can go and punch him. It's like if he's not nibbling on my ears, then I'm not doing something right. When he's trying to pester me, I know me and God are hand in hand. And it's like, uh-huh, Daddy, take him out. And we, ha we have our battle. And we become victorious. How often do we seek God's strength and not our own? Here again, we live in a world where Satan's convinced us we all deserve happiness. Whatever makes you happy, do it. You don't need anybody, anything. We're creating our children into a world now in the 21st century. We don't talk anymore. We text. I know, yeah, I'm a, I'm a fabulous texter. I'm, the first time I text one of my kids, they thought something weird. I'm like, what's with mother? Because I'm not really a techie type person. However, it's fine, but we need to talk to each other. You know, when it gets to the point that my son is sitting on the couch and I'm in the kitchen and he texts me, we get a problem. But a lot of homes are that way. People don't talk. People don't write notes anymore. People don't pick up a phone and say, hey, how are you? People pass you in the stores, good day, hello. I did this last Christmas everywhere I went. Starting December 1st, because, it, you know, everybody's not in that joyful mode yet. They're just thinking about what they got to do. Uh, so I started December 1st and saying, Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas. And the first 10 days, it was like, oh, yeah, oh, oh yeah, it is December, oh, yeah. It's like caught them off guard. And everywhere I went, I was trying to make sure I could do something fun so I printed up these little cards. So if we go out to a restaurant, I'd leave a little card on the table saying, Merry Christmas, may God bless you, and thank you for your service. I wanted to see people's reactions. Because the world is telling us we can do everything on our own. No, we need to communicate. We need to bond. Families need to bond. Couples need to laugh together. If there is a problem, I get it. Like I said, I've been there, done that. I'm still doing it. You got to talk. You got to pray. Some of my wrinkles are from praying for my husband. Some of my wrinkles and all my gray hair. Oh, well, if I had gray hair. Anyway, um, it's from my children. And my tired feet is from my community. But it's okay. It's okay. I cannot do this alone. I need God 
and support of the Christian family. And God says we need his strength. We need to remember. He says seek him continually. That is funny to me. Because I, I used to do this when I would teach a class with kids about fourth or fifth grade. We'd do a journal for a month. And then I realized, oh, that's too long. We'll do it for a week. And it would be in the journal, there'd be a section of how many times they prayed. And kids would go, morning, noon, night, bed. I said, okay, okay, good. I want you to start timing your prayers. How much time do you watch TV or play video games? How long are you at school? How many times did you go to church this week? How long were you in church? Did you sit in the service and listen to the message or in a class and listen to a lesson? Or did you sit outside and play with your friends? And what you do is you find out we don't spend as much time as we think with God. Really, we don't. Honestly, come on, let's get real. 24 hours in a day, if any of us in this room spent more than three hours, I would be shocked. Totally shocked. Oh, I keep Caleb on in my car all the time. Well, that's amazing. But I don't really think that's seeking God continually. They're seeking us. They're entertaining us. And we're using it as a reference that we're doing something holy. We need to seek him continually. We need his strength. We need his power. We need to know that we cannot do this without him. Because if you think you can, the devil's got you right where you're at. I was saved when I was nine. I was sold out when I was 16. And what I mean by that is at 16, I was sitting on a Thursday night at a church camp. And the devil just rocked my world, trying to convince me I was everything and a bag of chips. And God was telling me on the other side of my spirit, honey, your chips are crushed. You need me. And yeah, you're a good girl. You don't cause your parents problems. You obey. You're a good student. But you need me. And it was that night, it was like, okay, I'm sold out. You're mine, and I want to be yours. And from that day to today, I cannot say I've been perfect, but I've needed him. I've needed him to persevere. I've needed him to stay steadfast. I needed him to be firm and diligent and devoted. I can't do it without him. Because if I try to do it without him, then Kathy walks in the room. And Kathy's a jerk. So Kathy needs to go about her business and just let God do it. And why, why, why does he do this? A hundred times he explains in the scriptures, persevere, perseverance. It's important. Why? Because he wants to give us so much. And he can't if we're in the way. And we, he can't if we don't do it his way. Because we mess stuff up a lot. At least I do. I don't know about you guys. But I mess stuff up a lot. And we give up way too easy. In Philippians 3.14, it says, pressing towards the mark. Now, pressing is pushing down. You ever played tug of war where you're pushing and pulling? We need to make sure that we're pressing towards the mark. We, I don't know, sometimes I feel like, I just like, okay, Lord, here I am. Put me on that jet plane and get me there. But no, he says, no, there's a journey. and You need to press. And it's going to be hard, like Carrie said about the walk. I am not a runner. I'm not a, really a walker. I mean, I walk all day, so who wants to go walking? Um, but we have to sweat. I mean, some of us have had to go through things medically. Some of us have gone through things financially. Some things, maybe it's, it's emotionally. It could be with marriages. It could be addictions. It could be children. It could be just the fact of self-esteem. 
We need him to overcome all of those and to do it his way and not let the devil say, oh, you're doing right. This is a God. Don't let me tell you right now. The devil will make you think a lot of things are godly and they're so far from being God's way. So far from it. But we're telling ourselves, oh, but this is a God thing. God, God's really put it on my heart. You don't think the devil puts things on your heart? Sure he does. You have to become a de- you know, discerner of who's talking here. And we need to be able to press forward and press hard. In Romans 12, 12, it says, Rejoice in hope, be patient in tribulation, be constant and continuous in prayer. Wow. Be happy, because there is hope. Because we're all still breathing. But we have to be patient, which is a word none of us like. In tribulation, that covers a million things. But the whole time we're trying to deal with it, we need to pray. Pray. Jesus left heaven. And he left heaven so that we would never give up. He said, press forward and know how important it is because I'm here to show you you can. God has never asked anything of us that he has not done himself. That's more than we can say many times, right? And the day in the upper room when Jesus was sitting there with the 12 disciples, he says, now a time has come and I'm leaving. And I want you to know I will return, but every time you take a cup, I want you to remember it was me that shed for you. And he walked, and he passed the cup around, and everyone took a drink, and they had many, many questions, many, many questions, which I'm sure if I was there, I'd be question things too. And then he took the bread and the bread they had was very unleavened. There was no yeast in it. It was like a cracker. And he broke it. He says, every time you break bread, I want you to remember it's my body that I broke for you. We do this so often but we forget really why we're doing it, I think, sometimes. Are we really persevering? Are we asking for a fast card like we do in Monopoly? He did so much for us, and he didn't do anything or ask anything of us that he hasn't already done. He left heaven and came down here and became one of us. He walked the streets just like us. He grew up from infancy to adulthood just like us. But there came a time, God said, the Father said, I need you to do the ultimate. I need you to give yourself for them, for us. Wow, you guys, that that just tears me apart. Because I'm not worthy. I'm not worth the dirt. And Jesus said, I will do it. It was hard because the night in Gethsemane when he prayed, he said, Father, there's any way this can be taken away from me. Do it, please, Father. And he prayed so hard that the sweat became his blood. And he walked that road that day, Rosa de la Rosa. And there was no one on his side. The ones that had said, Hosanna, Hosanna had departed. They were in hiding. And he never did say, why, Lord, why? He just kept walking. And when you think about it, we're kind of like the thief. When you really think about it. We don't deserve life, but he will give it if we ask. There he hung between two men. 
one mocking him, one seeking him. One persevered, even at the end. And the one that persevered, Christ said, today you will be with me in paradise. God knows where we're at. He knows what we've been through. But he does know how hard and dedicated and diligent we are. And he does know if we are trying to persevere. Because he knows the true heart. And so today as we take communion, and we're going to watch a video. And during this video, you're welcome to come take communion if you wish. And at the end of the video, we're going to have prayer. I challenge all of you, as God has challenged me for the last 18 months, saying you've got to have perseverance, Kathy. It's going to be tough, but you can do it. You have to press forward. You have to be devoted. You have to be diligent, steadfast, firm. Because I showed you you can. And I'm here to hold your hand and to walk you through. And if each of us can keep pressing forward, someday he will welcome us in. And we won't have to deal with any more of this. I don't know about you, but I'm really looking forward to that day. Go ahead, girls.